Welcome back to the Self Made Auto Channel. Got us a 2011 non Hemi Dodge Ram 2500. It's got the big 6.7 in it. Front axle joints are wasted, as you've seen. I'm going to show you how to replace those, show you how I replace those. This vehicle is also getting some new front wheel bearings, as well, it's got 44,000 miles on it, so they're nuked. Axle joints are nuked. We got to get busy. I've already started on it because we got to get the brake rotors off. Ugh. So the wheel bearing on this side actually is not bad. It isn't loose anyways. The one on the other side was quite loose and the customer decided that he wanted both wheel bearings replaced, which I thought was okay in my book. However, these wheel bearings are very expensive. You know, they're whole hub assemblies. And I already started taking these retaining clips off. Now you do not have to save these. These are just kind of used for assembly. And for whatever reason, when they assemble this truck, they put six of these on each rotor. So usually I just take a screwdriver and just kind of peel back the ears. Uh, I actually keep these in stock, but I only have them for 12 millimeter and half inch. So they will not fit these studs. Once you peel the ears back on them, usually they'll just wiggle right off. You can spin them off and then beat the ears flat if you want to put them back on. Like I say, they're not necessary, but... And if you're not going to reuse them, save them, just take a chisel and just hit them on both sides and send them flying in pieces. I've gone through and already gotten the other five off. So that's how they are. Like I say, just set them down flat, hit them with a hammer, and be able to stick them right back on. Hold your a rotor for you. I guess while we're right here, we can pull the axle nut. Ah, this reminds me of working at my dad's shop. That's all we ever worked on was... 2500s, 3500s, 550s, and of course, you know, big trucks, but on the car end, I guess it would be called this. These are the light duties that we worked on. So we'll pull the cotter pin out, set it to the side, and then we will pull the action on off. I believe that's an inch and something, inch and 11 sixteenths perhaps. Inch and 11 sixteenths. I've got a 12 point, so you gotta fiddle with it to find the right groove here. These castle nuts can be deceiving. Pull that off. <coughs> Take our washer off. Now, if you're doing this on an older ram with the vacuum disconnect front end, before you pull the axle shaft out, make sure you lock it in four-wheel drive. Otherwise, the little uh, lock coupler, when you pull the axle out, will have a tendency to fall down. Now, this is, you know, solid, full-time live axle, no vacuum disconnect. But if for some reason you are working on one with a vacuum disconnect front end and you forget to put it in four-wheel drive and you pull the axle out and a little piece falls, don't worry about it. You can reach way in there with a, you know, like a long screwdriver or a long pry bar, hold the... Uh, the, the lock piece up, the, the ring that locks the two axles together, and then have somebody start the truck, put it in four-wheel drive, and then when the shift fork pulls over, it'll slide on the axle where it needs to be. Trust me, if you've, if you're, if you've done that and you've made that mistake, you'll know exactly what I'm talking about. So now, we can take and bust the caliper loose. That uses the big old 24. We'll get the bolts loose on that. Now, the little Harbor Freight does not have enough mustard to crack these loose, so use a big bar. I'm getting on there. Usually, these things are wicked tight. Get in the hole, little fella. There we go. Running noises. Once they're loose, then you can zip them out of the impact. And they're not Loctite or anything, but they're big jumbo bolts. All right. I'm going to 
before we pull the caliper off, I do want to take the ABS wire, just get it out of all of the holders on the hose. And then up here behind the inner fender, it has a red, it does have a red lock on it. So I'm just going to unplug it, flick the red lock up. The new bearing does come with the new holder here, so we will just grab that with something. Side cutters, not worried if it breaks. Christmas tree zip tie fastener type of course you know I busted it off but if you're trying to reuse it you know don't snap it off and then there's one more retainer right up here by the ball joint just take it open that up and then this way here our wire is already off for us and then we'll try to compress the piston a little bit or pistons just hold some pressure over on it there's that, that'll make it come off the rotor easier. I'm gonna go get a hook. Now you don't want these calipers swinging by the hose. So we will hang it, they're heavier than heck. And then we will straighten this tobacco back out here and get the rotor off. There we go. Time to go get the big nasty. Douche it down with your favorite spray. Our spray of the day we're using is by Crown. Super fast acting, solvent free, with anti seize, inhibits rust, lubricates, and displaces moisture. Not a sponsor. But we'll just give it some. I don't know why. Just because. And now we have to work on getting. The hub bolts loose. That's what I want here. So we'll spin it to the side. We'll do two and then do the other two. Usually, if I'm doing both sides, which I've already done the other side, but I wanted to record at least one side for you folks. Typically, what I'll do is when I turn it one way, I'll do these two bolts go over there, do the other two bolts, turn it that way. There, you're not turning the wheel a bazillion times. Now the back. The bolts that hold these on are 18 millimeter, or at least they're supposed to be pre rust. And they can be pretty tight. So, usually, what I'll do is I'll go through and crack them loose by hand. And then we'll spin them out with an impact. It's just kind of sickening, you know. You know, in New York State, you buy this seventy thousand dollar truck, and it's not long for this world. You know, this thing's about two thousand eleven, less than fifty k on it. She ain't got much time left.
Way to go, Ginger. So, you've got four of these to get out. Problem is, they stick way through on the other side of the hub, and then you know the first ten threads get crappy, and you got to drag it through. There's two. We'll turn the wheel. Get the other two. You guys can't see crap, can you? I ain't in the movie business. They'd fire me. Where are you? No, you're in there. Oh, that felt like something. Just try to make sure you're on the head good. Definitely use a six point socket. This is my extendable half inch ratchet, so she extends way out. Made by Top Tool. Well, they're kind of chintzy when they put it together because all they held the little cam mechanism here on was that one little teeny tiny roll pin. And it always breaks. So today I fixed it with the welder. Now it won't break. Let's see if there's a bottom one there. If it means. Come on, Ginger. So I've been thinking, I think the old Harbor Freight might be losing a little power. I'm not 100%. So I've been using this every day since November. And now we're into May. Every day I use it. Every single day, all day long. It may just be my overactive imagination, but I've got the other one over on the other side that I don't use every day. So I'm kind of saving that to see if when I think this one's really losing it and then go get the other one just for comparison's sake. Depending on how rotted your truck is, there are a couple different ways you can get this out. They make those hub busters that you stick on here and then you'll whale the living hell out of them with a sledgehammer. That'll work. You can use big nasty, beat the living crap out of it, and that'll work. 
There's another method you can use where you put the bolts back in the back side. You stick a socket on here in whatever size extension you need until it hits the inner axle housing. You start the truck up and then you use the power steering and you turn the wheel so it pushes on the bolt from the back side. They also make an actual tool that does that. Uh, instead of, you know, if you don't want to use a socket, there's a company that makes a little little set. I used to have some, or I actually had them at my dad's shop for doing uh, some of the Fords and, and other trucks like that. Uh, like I say, you put the bolt back in, spin it out a few threads, stick this tool on there, turn the wheel using the power steering, push against the axle, and it'll actually push the hub off. Now, uh, kind of good timing because Rich over at the Boss Garage, he just did a short video on that to show how he does it. Of course, he lives in the Rust Belt 2 up in the snowy north of Canada, and he shows how to do it with a socket. So I'll link to his video instead of me demonstrating that for you. My weapon of choice is the puller. Now, this does not always work. In this case, I think it will. Grab some wheel nuts. You gotta be careful. If you go full beans on this thing, what'll happen is the inner part of the hub will stay and you'll just pull the outer hub off. And you know, of course, everything is junk at that point. I really don't care if it breaks on me because we are putting on new ones. The other side came off relatively easy. Oftentimes what I'll do if I'm by myself, I'll use this. I'll put some pressure on it, give her a few whacks of big nasty and off she comes. What's up, Mrs. Oh. Lunch is ready. Oh, baby. Okay, give me this a minute. Well, it's ready. So. It's ready right now? Whenever you're ready, it's ready. All right. We'll, we'll be right in. We're demonstrating to the people. Okay. Spray that down. Flavor of the day. And off she comes. So this makes the job quite easy. Like I said, that does put a lot of pressure on it. You can do some damage. Use your mind. Now we will pull out the axle shaft. This is the long side. Probably should have demonstrated everything on the short side just because it's easier. So we'll get out of the inner seal. Ah, a little rust. Come on, baby. Oh, there she is. Give you the look around where we're at right now. Now, when you're when we clean this up, don't get a lot of crap down the axle tube if you can avoid it. Long side's kind of hard to put in without you know inadvertently scraping the axle on the way in. We try to do our best. Like I say, that is the long tube. Of course, I've already come over here and done this side. Now this is the short axle over here. We got the brand new U-joint. She's nice and smooth. Just got to finish putting the brakes on. And now. We will go see what the very lovely, look at the weather, isn't that amazing? This is all made for us for lunch. You're dark. The backlighting. Now you're vibrant. Is that better? What'd you make? Oh my gosh. What in the thunder? I don't even want to ask, I'll just eat it. That looks yummy. This is some of our protocol food, our autoimmune protocol. Mm -hmm. All right, what is it? Uh, I'm guessing spaghetti squash. Uh -huh. uh, I'm smelling some kind of pesto. Uh -huh. Looks like a chicken, mm -hmm. chicken pesto, and spaghetti squash. That's yeah. my guess. That's You're my... supposed to put olives in it, but I didn't really know. Really? As really... Greek as I am, and you didn't put olives in it. I know, but I, I, I thought I'd put them on the side, and you could make up your mind. Boom! Good thinking. Yeah. All right, let's eat. Okay. I'm hungry. I'm hungry too. Yeah, turn up. All right. Yep. Yeah, goodbye. Bye. Say bye. See ya. Uh, lunch time is over. We do not have a nap time for this, man. It sucks. I wish we did. So we'll get back to work. We'll give this U joint a thorough douching. Now these ones, I choose not to beat them out however I do beat them a little bit to get the clips off rattle them loose what's up Mrs. O? I found something. What'd you find me? I don't know it was out on the road. <laughs> so what do we got here? 600 volts gasoline and oil resistant. Yep. Nice. 
That's for you. I'm really hoping you found me some of this. Thanks. You're welcome. We'll keep it around for some. Uh, now, I, now I ripped my glove. <laughs> yeah, so we'll get started. I just want to jar them a little bit. You can see how bad that you joined it. That sucker's pretty wasted. Try to beat them a little bit. We got to get the inside clips that reside on the U joints. So here's the U joint off the other side. The little clips that go here, right? Wrong. Here, upper groove. Got to get them off. We'll give her a couple wax. Sometimes that helps. Got that one moving must be the clip on the other side was broke. That moved way too easy. Chisel. That one came out in pieces. Pieces. Make sure you get all the pieces off, otherwise when you try to press it out, hit it out, whatever you use, it won't happen. I'll whack her through the other direction. What you mean, Steph? We just moved it that way. It seems like it'd move right back. Of me and a Sally and hit this thing. Woman. There we go. It moved. I think the cap might even be broken. Nope, that was just rust. And there's that clip. Looks like the whole clip. Nothing but the clip. Now we'll do this side also. Didn't take much, just want to jar them. Yeah, one to go. friends and welcome to the Hydraulic Press Channel. Nah, just kidding. It's just us. So we're going to stick this up here. We are going to use the press. I've got a little receiving gun. Just a piece of pipe. I machined it down for something. I don't know what, but today it is for U-joints. And you're going to want your safety spectacles on because things tend to explode. I'm going to try to move some stuff closer here. Lift my stand up. I just got a little stand on the opposite end here, just to kind of hold it. Oh, one of these little rolly stands. I bought it at a yard sale. It's pretty handy. So I'll put the receiving cup on one side. I just use the socket. I'll stick it in there. Uh, the last one exploded and cut me. So you gotta be careful of the press, you can really ruin stuff here. And we put a little tension on it. Now beating them, we already hit it with a hammer, so it should be jarred loose a little bit. But make sure you kind of hang on to this if your melon's next to it. 
It should get you. It's gonna scare the crap that's gets out of you. This one came apart pretty easy. Usually what I was gonna do is what I was gonna show you is you put some tension on them and then usually I just take just take a hammer and just you know give it a thump and then everything blows up and you're good to go. So in this case that comes right out. Set that down. Oh, don't roll away on me fella. Get our other cap off because the bearings are gone in them so they come out pretty easy. Don't fall. Set that down. Get our stand out of the way for him time being. Then we'll just pop this one out. Hopefully this one comes out just as easy. Now, a lot of times I just beat him out with a hammer. Because the press can get you in trouble because you can uh, press these ears down and then the new U-joint won't fit. So you gotta use a little bit of common sense when you're doing this, you know, don't, don't go full gorilla on it. So we'll put some tension on it. Oh, she's gonna scare us. Feel it. We get a hose. <clears throat> we'll give a little tap on the U joint. <laughs> and she went. That's all it takes. You just gotta get them moving. Then just kind of keep repeating that process a little bit. Oh, baby. Just like grandma taught us. And then hopefully the cap will come off. We're a bit nasty. Yeah, usually I take this over to the bench and do it, but come on. My hands are too slippery. Slippery little fella. Oh, easy, big nasty, <laughs> shaking off on us. You can just get these out of here. Tip them to the side a little. Give a whack with a hammer. Usually not near a hammer. Don't want to ruin anything. Ah! Winner, winner. You just get a tap of the hammer and they'll come right out. So now we got to go clean the both yokes up and clean out the inside. Usually I'll wire brush them. Sometimes you got to touch them with a little cookie wheel, especially if you got a lot of rust build up down here where the clip's going to sit. And then we'll just put it back together. Got them all cleaned up. Got some SKFU joints from the napper. Now I have used various U joints on these. Uh, none of them which I've had, you know, great success. Everything from OEMs to, you know, Moog, Precision, Spicer, you know, they're all kind of expensive. But I've never seen any really last past, you know, the 50,000 mile mark. Now these are greaseable. I suppose if somebody did grease them, uh, perhaps they would, but, you know, that's not going to happen. Take and pull the caps off. That way we don't send any of them flinging. And try to bite, be as clean as possible as you can when you do this. As far as getting you know big chunks into the U joint. Let's see. I think if I remember correctly, uh, 
these ones. Some U joints are styled a little different, so you can't, you know, let's say, you know how we took the other one out, how it'll slip in. Now this U joint is a little different design, so you can't just put it in like that. I did want to double check that just to be certain. I've got to get, got to let my stand down here a little bit. I want to make sure that we're level somewhat. That way we're pushing as straight as we can. This can be a little bit of a pain to get started. There's that. All on me. We'll stick the unit up in. We'll stick the cap on. I probably should have just used it with the spacer, but. Garbage blown in off the street. You know, again, putting these together, you can push these ears together pretty easy. So things don't seem right. I want to let our axle shift down here just a little bit more. There we go. I'm just holding the U joint up in. on that back side just a little bit. There we go. You just want to make sure you're trying to push it in as straight as possible. Sometimes you got to work it just a little bit. it down and through as far as we can. It makes putting the other cap on easier. So we gotta have an empty space to push it into. There's that. for the other cap should be being the keyword when you push them all the way through and they're up on the very tippy top of the other cap you can jostle them a little bit to and fro to get it straight see much here. I don't really have a good vantage point for you. Put the one lock ring on. I'll push it down to that one hits. Don't go too far. The press has enough power you can you can break that like nobody's business. Give it a little bit of tension. We'll put the other one on. Make sure they click in good. Relieve the tension from that. 
Now you can go over and just whack this with a hammer the other way. I want to take and just give it a little push. Just kind of equalize everything. Just a little bit of tension. change in tone with the hammer now when you do that everything kind of equalizes and your u-joint has to be able to move you know very easily there so keep that in mind if it doesn't then your ears are probably pinched which sucks because trying to get them spread back apart and keeping them parallel is, is difficult your best bet is to do a good job taking it out and not not mess it up that's your best bet I clean stuff off here, but anywho, let's keep motoring. Where's our other our yoke? You guys are sitting where I normally sit stuff. So we will take that. Just a little bit to get it started. Let's That's where bad things can happen. Let's see. Just because it doesn't sit on there flat. That's the problem. little bit easier on the long shaft just because you're not you know muscling around the weight of it and taking a chance of you know dropping a needle so we're essentially just doing it a little bit backwards from how we did the other one straight through. Bring on the bottom side. That is on. Never go far enough. that Put it down to the snap ring hits and it should expose our other groove.
good. Yep, actually this one we don't have to tap that U-joint's already nice and centered. Sometimes you get lucky. I was going to flip it around and give it a push. But in this case, it's nice and floppy already and that's what you want. If the, what will happen is, I mean, they'll be super stiff and then usually just whacking it on the yoke. Uh, with a hammer or you know just hitting each cap you know each way kind of get things centered up and uh, that, that's pretty much it really not much to show here folks <laughs>